Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Rick Thompson. I'm Landon Oaks. Landon, I wanted to talk today about a short article I wrote for a, a networking group for founders and CEOs of professional services firms. So usually smaller firms, you know, 10 million-ish, 10, 20 million, something like that, uh, maybe even smaller. And uh, I get asked the question by these folks, how do I take advantage of data when I don't have a huge budget to have a data team or to bring in uh, a, a partner to, to do extensive work. And I think people sometimes get twisted around the axle, especially um, if they're smaller and haven't done this before, thinking they need to engineer something fully complete mm -hmm. to get value. And you actually don't. I, I think that the place you want to start, you know, all, all companies have, have done some kind of BI, with whether it's just with Excel or or Power BI, whatever they're doing. But the place to start is just pick a problem that if you could move the needle on that problem in the company, um, it would be very meaningful, you know, in, increase revenues or increase bottom line or solve some uh, client satisfaction problem, some major thing. Um, and then, then try to think about what are the couple, one or two proximate causes of the problems you're having there and what data can inform on, on those proximate causes in a way that you can make decisions to start correcting over time. And it's really that simple. Um, be careful not to think, I, well, I need to pull everything in and build a big bunch of dashboards mm -hmm. with tons of visualizations and tons of KPIs. You, you don't need to do that. Yeah. The example I gave was of a company we worked for that had a problem with uh, their, tech, their field tech utilization numbers. And if they could improve those by 1%, it had a significant impact on their bottom line for each percent. Uh, and it, they were having a hard time getting visibility. And we just really had to get at a couple of key things for them, uh, key metrics that if their managers could see every day, they could start adjusting the behavior and the processes and uh, standard operating procedures for their, their uh, reps in the field. And they did that and very quickly um, added millions to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, to talk through that a little bit. Really, I think the place to start is, is pick one question. Don't pick five. Don't yeah. pick ten. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have five that are really core, you know, go ahead and do that. But, but pick the one. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I definitely always, always um, push people towards one, right? It's, it's going to get overwhelming if you're trying to think of five, especially if they're not related quite as much as they should be where, you know, you pick one and it, it suddenly it seems much more manageable, right? Something much more doable. Um, and then once you get that first one under your belt, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to start moving on to the next. Yeah. So once you have that one, obviously you've got to inventory data and make sure you can get the data you need to, to get at that. Don't, don't feel like you need everything though. Mm -hmm. You may not need as much as you think. And then I encourage people sketch a simple view at that point. Just do a spreadsheet. Uh, run, run, run your BI by hand for a little bit and make sure that it actually is moving the needle for you. Yeah. Um, or, or it would, if you could be able to see this every morning, that type of thing. Um, so that's sort of the second thing I recommend to people. Don't over-engineer it yeah, to start with. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I still do work for clients, you know, um, every week. And one of the biggest things that I, you know, always push is, don't don't even try to make it look pretty right away, right? Focus on getting the numbers in front of people. Uh, you know, you know, making it look pretty does take a little bit of time, right? Yeah. But just throw it on there, make it quick and dirty. And as soon as people start seeing these numbers, even when you see it as a developer, you know, light bulbs start to go off. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, you do want it pretty in the end, I yeah, think, exactly. just because there's satisfaction <laughs> there and users adopt it better. But you're right. To start with, you don't need that. You need to sketch something. Mm -hmm. um, and what you said there is so true that when uh, the business users start to see data, that's when they realize what data they really need. Sometimes you hit it right, like what you guessed was right. But a lot of times they'll look at it and say, ooh, now that I'm seeing this, now I know what I need is. If we could pull in this one piece of data, yeah. it would make a huge difference. So really sort of test it manually first. And as you said, it doesn't have to be pretty. It can be a, a, a true, you know, the data has to be right. Yeah. But it can be sort of proof of concept level, minimum viable product level, that type of thing. Once you have that going, then you do want to automate. Because I've seen systems, BI systems that are manual, hand-carried. Um, that, that are quite effective, but they just fall apart. The business gets busy. 
People have other priorities that jump up. You have a, a, a client that needs extra attention, so you're putting all your time there. So the dashboard, your spreadsheet, or whatever you're doing is not getting updated, and yeah. then it then it sort of goes away. And those things need to be used constantly and need care and feeding. And it's important to automate to do that, I think. Yeah. So. There's there's also issues before, too, where, like, you know, it's, it relies on one person who knows exactly where to get the data, exactly where to put it. Um, yeah. And that person, something happens, right? They leave, they, whatever might happen, they can't do it anymore. That knowledge is lost, and they're... Yeah. You're not in a great spot. <laughs> so you start simple, you hand carry it, you've got a minimum viable product. Now you've got something that's good, you automate it, make mm -hmm. it pretty, yeah. <laughs> uh, make it look good, distribute it to people, have them using it. But then I think the last step that people sometimes have a misconception about is, well, that's it. It's done forever. And the reality in BI is that you will always be iterating it because the business is going to change. The data is going to change. The problem that's important is going to change. Mm -hmm. If you truly solve the most important problem, I mean, it's solved, there's a next most important problem that will be burning that you need to get after there. So, so by iterating, um, I don't mean just have engineers sort of tinkering with it. I mean the business actually giving feedback. Um, you know, the, the BI, whoever's doing the BI, actually talking to the managers, talking to the people who are using the dashboards, understanding what's working what's not working, what could be better, and making those those adjustments. Usually the business will come to the BI team and say, hey, I need, I need you to change this. Sometimes it's something that is glaring, like turns mm -hmm. out our definition for this measure or KPI was wrong. Yeah. We need to adjust it. But sometimes it's subtle things. If, you know, if I could just click into this and see the detail behind it, then it would save me 10 minutes every for every case that I'm looking at, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, even just like a new layout, you know, like if I had this piece of information right next to the employee name, right? right. Like something small like that or a new filter. It's a really easy things to do that just unlock a gigantic, you know, um, knowledge base for these people. Yeah. And that can be challenging, I think, that that iterating nature of BI, unless you realize it up front, that's just sort of how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, if you come in with a, a perception of I'm, go I'm going to do a BI project for a couple of months and then be done with BI for the next couple of years, that's almost never the case. Yeah. Sometimes, but, but yeah. rarely. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Close it out. I'm so I, I'm a big golfer, right? Yeah. And I think BI is very similar. You know, as soon as you're fit, you fix a problem in your swing <laughs> when you're golfing, um, a new one pops up, right? Yeah. And if I just continue to focus on that one problem I already fixed, I'm not going to get any better, right? right so right. the one know. problem you fix, at least if it's like me, the one problem you fix created another problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it's an endless <laughs> chain. Hopefully, BI isn't quite that bad. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, that's really all I wanted to cover here. Just sort of. Uh, Encourage people, especially who are earlier in the BI journey, simplify. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't boil the ocean. I talked to a, a CEO of a, a professional services company in the last couple of weeks that was having that. He had great dashboards, tons mm -hmm. of stuff, but he was struggling with getting value out of it because they hadn't narrowed down to figure out what do we really need to focus on. Yeah. All right. Good discussion. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.